Hi everyone, I hope you liked the videos in our Spark interview question series. Today I am back with one more Spark interview question. Uh, it's a very famous interview question and a bit tedious one. Uh, a lot of people get confused uh, during this interview question and you know this interview question kind of separates a person having good knowledge of Spark and a person who is very new to Spark or have not actually worked on Spark. So the question is how to choose number of executors and memory that should be al ex uh, allocated to executors. So let us start with the answer. Uh, before this we should make some assumptions. Uh, assume that you have six machines in your cluster. Every machine has 16 cores and every machine has 64 GB RAM. Now there are a lot of strategies uh, we can employ here. Uh, you know I have just listed it down. Uh, first we will discuss that what will happen if our executors are very granular, very small. Then we will discuss what are the disadvantages or problems if we have a very big executor. Uh, and then we will discuss what is the right way of allocating resources or uh, you know choosing number of executors, executor cores and memory. So let us start with it. Okay, so this is the scenario when we uh, have chosen smallest possible executor. So uh, we choose executor which has, uh, you know, which will take one core per machine. Uh, you know, it will take one core and uh, four GB RAM. So in every machine, since we have, uh, 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 you know, sixteen cores in every machine. 16 executors will be running uh, 16 into 6 there will be totally 96 executors will be trying to start and every executor will have 4 GB RAM so this is a bad approach because uh, you know we are not using uh, threading capability or uh, parallelization capability of executor uh, we are not using the JVM completely. So uh, we are only starting executors and uh, we are expecting all the work to be done by executor. We have not uh, given any resources for executor cores. So our executor core will only be one. So this is not a good strategy. So let us uh, uh, see our next strategy. Okay, next strategy is to have a largest possible executor. Uh, so we have six machines. So assume we start one executor per machine. The executor will take all the memory on that machine and it will take all the cores on that machine. So since on every machine we have 16 cores, there will be 16 executor cores assigned to that executor and 64 GB RAM given to that particular executor. Now we have some problems with this approach also. The problems are that uh, since we are giving 16 cores to a single executor uh, and all the executor cores will be trying to read their own partitions from HDFS there will be a lot of HDFS IO contention in this scenario so those cores will be competing with each other to get the res uh, resources to get the uh, IO throughput from HDFS and you will notice that reads and writes will become slow in this scenario so that's why it is not a good idea uh, next is we have not left any resources for operating system processes uh, if operating system will not be able to do the regular task of uh, memory cleanup and all the process management uh, you know uh, the whole machine will slow down and uh, you know we'll see impact on our job al job also there is something called memory overhead that is required uh, in spark and yarn so this is usually required uh, for direct buffers direct buffers are uh, direct buffer is a off heap memory so in jvm we have heap where all the objects are created right so we 
can get off heap memory also in a JVM uh, that is called direct buffers there uh, all the shuffle operations can happen through that or uh, you know uh, you know spark uses for uses that particular memory for different kind of optimizations so uh, if that off heap memory is not given to spark and yarn then again you will see a hit in your performance so we need to leave uh, that memory also for spark we need to leave some overhead memory for spark now this is the correct approach I am I'm going to explain here that uh, you know how to calculate the number of executors and how to calculate memory per executor okay so we have 96 cores in total we should leave one core on each machine for OS processes so 96 minus number of machines becomes 90 90 cores are there which we can assign to our spark job so now we have total six machines uh, 90 divided by 6 is equal to 15 so that means we on every machine we have 15 cores so you know if, if, if this sounds a bit confusing you can think that on every machine we have 16 cores one core is given to OS processes and now on every machine we are left with 15 cores we will like to run five executor cores per machine you know five threads per executor because we have discussed in previous slide that if the number of threads or number of uh, executor cores are more for one executor there is a lot of contention between those uh, executor cores and the HDFS IO goes down so for that we will restrict the number of cores uh, for each executor as five so considering that we will get three executors per machine we have total 15 cores on a machine and each executor should have five cores so total number of executor we can have is equal to 15 by 5 equal to 3 now we will discuss that what is the memory required per executor so on our machine we have 64 GB RAM 1 GB we are giving to OS for all the execution that it wants to do so we are left with 63 GB RAM on a single machine now few minutes back we decided that on each machine we will have three executors so by this logic 63 divided by 3 we should have 21 GB RAM per executor but we have to give some RAM we have to leave some RAM for yarn and spark overhead memory also so approximately 2 GB we can leave for this you know if it is 64 GB uh, RAM per machine if it is 128 GB RAM then approximately 3.5 GB or 4 GB you have to leave so there is a formula uh, you know it has to be uh, you know 70 percent of uh, uh, you know 0.7 percent of uh, you know, some number I can share that formula in comment section uh, so you have to adhere to that uh, while you have to keep keep that formula in mind while you know giving this number uh, for leaving this memory for yarn overhead and direct buffers so if we remove 2 GB out of 21 GB we are left with 90 GB per executor so per executor we will be assigning 90 GB RAM 19 GB RAM and uh, on every machine we will have 3 executors and every executor will have 5 cores at its disposal I hope this was clear this is a very usual way of uh, uh, you know assigning this assigning resources to your uh, uh, spark job if you have any question please post it in the comment section I will be very happy to answer that please subscribe to our channel share the videos with your friends please also give us feedback that how we can improve the quality of videos and how we can improve your experience on our channel Thank you everyone.